subscribe and ring the bell to never miss an update. Hello everyone! Today on Lady Mary Bath we will visit a wonderful shop, Heights Antiques on Yale. It's located in the historic Houston Heights, which is the oldest master plan community in the state of Texas. It was founded in 1891 by the Omaha and South Texas Land Company, headed up by Daniel Denton Cooley, grandfather of the world-renowned heart surgeon, the late Dr. Denton Cooley. And it was eventually incorporated into the city of Houston. The Heights is a great place to spend the day with restaurants, shops, and historical homes. I can't wait to pop inside to Heights Antiques and see what treasures await. The owner is also a viewer and I hope to visit with her. Let's go on in. Just peeking in the window, I knew I would love this shop. It's calling my name. It's a nice warm welcome as you come into the Heights Antiques. I have been looking for a chinoiserie planter and this one is lovely. It's even got a built-in pedestal. It's so pretty with the yellow flowers and the pop of color. Let's take a look at this table. I'm drawn to the double happiness, which you know I love. I feature that in my chinoiserie segment and had a lot of these pieces on my birthday table as well. And these ginger jars are quite nice. Um, I love how they placed it on a silver tray. Let's take a look at the other booths. Oh, I see so many things that pique my interest here. This brain coral is quite unusual on a lucite base. I've not seen a piece that large before. It'd be a great focal point on an entry table or even as a centerpiece. And remember that ginger jars can be used for floral arrangements. You simply remove the lid. If I had discovered Heights Antiques on Yale before my birthday party, I could have added some of these beautiful items. And this is a compote, which I've not seen before in the traditional blue and white chinoiserie. And orange is opposite the color wheel for blue and it really complements it well. And that makes me think I need to add that to my chinoiserie collection. Bamboo magazine rack is very interesting. And you can get lots of ideas when you antique shop, buy a few pieces and recreate the look at home. And anything on a tray really unifies it and tells a story. I think I really need to create more of a contrast with my collection. And these deer ginger jars are very different. Love those. And these petite lamps would be great on a breakfast sideboard if you had a smaller table. Love the bamboo. It could be nice for an entryway. And again, those deer ginger jar. These are very interesting. I am loving this room right here. I feel like I'm in someone's dining room with all the chinoiserie plates and accessories. And again, the use of a silver tray. I really like this as a centerpiece. It could also be on a buffet and tells a really good story. I want to transport this entire room to my home. It brings such joy. Those candles would make great hostess gifts. They have so many different price points and items here that are perfect for every occasion. They're somewhere in my favorite collection. Really need to add some of this color to mine. And covered boxes I think are just so special. And the silver gallery tray that's fitted. Oh, it's just exquisite. It'd be a great centerpiece as well. And here they have a compote collection. So they have unified that look. Gives me some ideas. This is definitely an antique that's hand painted. Looks like a religious item. And make sure you look on all the shelves. There are lots of precious things that are tucked in. And silver adds a lot of credibility to your collection and to your home. It looks kind of old world and I love using silver. I see some angelic aware here. Those plates are 
Really interesting with the artichoke design. I love those colors. And everything is displayed nicely. And some of these items are rather hard to find. And I think it's one-stop shopping here at Heights Antiques. There's the Waterford Eagle. I remember when that was launched in the 90s. It's a great piece. And that petite cross is very special. And the reticulated silver-plated compote has so many different uses. Wouldn't that be an excellent gift? You could even put cotton balls in it and keep it in the bathroom. And that Candlewick vase is great, as is the Marquis by Waterford Ice Bucket. And this is the Ralph Lauren Herringbone collection that my friend has, a bargain at 40, and it turns out it was actually $20 after I checked out. Amazing. Depression glass sherbets. Those would be perfect for shrimp cocktail or even a dessert or strawberries Romanoff with brunch. Globes really add interest to a bedroom, especially a kid's room. And it's neat to see if they're still current. I think that adds interest. This one looks to be, has an old world look, pun intended. And this casserole is missing a lid, but I think that would be a great centerpiece. And this is something you don't see too often. That's for cheese. And that's made in England. It's got a great back stamp, Bursalum. This is definitely mid-century. I like that shade of green. That would be fun for the fall or for Christmas. And the Orifers Cat is something that I don't have in my collection. I think I will consider that. And these copper trays would be great just on a coffee table with some interesting items. The ice buckets are great from the 60s. I could see that in an episode of the Brady Bunch. And seashell boxes are really coming back some of the vintage pieces. I remember as a child finding these at a seashell shop in Galveston. Love that look. It's Texas with a modern twist. Well, Christy, it's so nice to be in your shop today. And I'm just amazed at all the beauty and vintage items that you have. I understand this shop has been in your family for generations. It has. Um, my dad and a couple other dealers that had been in an antique mall decided to open their own and that was in 1997 and um, it's just kind of evolved over time a few about 10 years ago my dad retired and so he passed the business along to me well you've done a great job it's Thank a you. beautiful store and tell me do you have in-store events where customers could maybe get on an email list and we do we've got them? several events throughout the year um, Probably our biggest event is the White Linen Night, which happens in the Heights every f August, first Saturday of August. The last two years they've had to cancel it because of COVID, but um, we're on target to have it again next year. So that'll be our biggest event, but we also do seasonal. Um, we'll have a fall sale this Saturday and um, our Christmas one in December. So. Wonderful, I need to get on that email list so <laughs> that I can be included in that. And I noticed there's a lot of chinoiserie here, which of course is near and dear to my heart. I love chinoiserie. And is that something you specialize in? I love it too. And it's very popular right now. And most of our dealers do a really good job of keeping up with the current design trends. And so it's definitely in the magazines right now. And they're bringing it into the shop. I just so, love it too. Customers. And I wanted to also ask you, um, I understand that you were featured on HGTV. Tell me more about that. We were recently. Um, there's a couple that live here in Houston and they've got a show called um, Two Steps Home and they flip houses and um, they come here, they came here to buy some decor. Well, they came to the right place for sure for the house that they were selling. <laughs> That's so neat. So you were featured fun. on TV. That's great. All right. Well, thanks for welcoming us today. Absolutely. And shop Beth. around. So I haven't glad been to have you. Thank you. Great. It's a lovely secretary. Wouldn't that be great for an entry room as well? Doesn't have to be just in an office. My parents had one in a bedroom, in a guest room. I thought that was neat. And you know, I love crystal biscuit barrels. You could take the lid off and line it with candy canes in the winter. This Linux vase is very special. That's part of the presidential collection. It's the Jefferson vase, and that's an amazing prize. Look at all that detail. And you wouldn't necessarily have to use it as a vase. You could 
keep it on a shelf for decor. This is Homer Laughlin. It has the Georgian design. What a bargain at $9. And the 55 actually tells you the year. This was made in 1955. And that would be great on any table and you don't have to have the matching pieces. Teacup and saucer. I think this is from Castleton. And it's nice that there are a pair of them and that's an amazing price at $14. This is a pattern you see a lot. And what a great fruit bowl that would be for serving at a shower. This at first I thought could be Tiffany & Company. It's actually Marquis by Waterford, which is no surprise because they're both made in the Nachtmann factory in Germany. So they're sort of crystal cousins. The silver basket is something that would be a nice focal point. You could put scones in that for a tea table or maybe place potpourri on an entry. And these are Sadler mugs. You probably have seen my teapot collection segment and the Sadler company made some beautiful and commemorative teapots. This is neat, an enamelware. You could put some candies in that. I like to look at furniture, even though I'm kind of full up at my house right now. And I think the price is right. Look at the Queen Anne legs on that. And sometimes you find saucers without the cups, but think about all the purposeful uses. That could be for a cookie, or used as a coaster. And you know, I love the English barley twist. It's a great table, gate leg. And this pottery piece, I thought would be neat for fall. Looks almost like a pumpkin. I have a lot of Halloween decor. This looks very vintage. Wouldn't that be a very unique compote to use on your Halloween table? Speaking of tables, this Florentine design is interesting. I like to change it up and not have all dark wood in a room. Add some interest. This amethyst cut to clear vase is very sweet and petite. It's hard to find that color. At first I thought this was a sculpture, and then I realized it's actually a lamp. So you get two for one. And you get to pick your shade, so you could really get creative and go to Restore and find one of those. A blindfolded vase. German porcelain child with blindfold. That is interesting, and I don't see a stamp on it. A lot of times things made in the early 1800s did not have a back stamp. Wouldn't that be nice for poolside entertaining? Looks like enamel wear. It is granite wear, oversized. And here they've got lots of different vases in my favorite chinoiserie, but different colors. And that flat vase is really interesting. And that could be a nice centerpiece as well. I like the green. It's definitely a different look. And there are just so many chinoiserie pieces that I wish I had discovered this store before my birthday party. But it's never too late. I could add more to my collection. And it can be overwhelming with so many treasures, but just pick one item, look underneath, find a back stamp, something that is of interest, and imagine how you can use that in your home. This is unusual. I've not seen anything like this before. It looks to be hand painted. It's an enamel box. Could be a conversation piece. This booth is like a ray of sunshine. I feel so happy just sitting here with all the bright colors. It's almost like being in the Provence in France. And lots of neat things I wanted to point out. Here's a set of antique mahogany nesting tables with a glass top and they stack nicely. I think that's such a neat piece. And over here, I'm seeing all kinds of treasures, lusterware salt and pepper shakers and a pair of sugar shakers. I'm gonna show that in a future episode. And this green celadon vase, isn't that amazing? I just love all the things in their books that they used as risers. Here's a book on London. It adds such interest to everything you do with decor. There are just so many items. And let me show you back here. I found some more things. Over here, there is a maiden occupied Japan figurine of a lady with a parasol and it's only $6. I'm definitely taking this home. I could put that in one of my cloches. You know, I feature an episode on making your own cloche and using it for decor. I think that is so fun, and that is definitely going to be put at the register in just a minute. 
and there's some milk glass and all kinds of other things here. And I wanted to point out this mug. I do have some viewers that collect these and you often ask, how do you display them? How do you use them? And this is a great idea. They've just put an artificial plant right inside. And this one is $95 and made in England. These small little vases or candle holders are interesting. I had to look it up and the inn with the crown is a company from Saxony, Germany. The Fenton dish would be a great gift. Think of what you could add to that and wrap it in cellophane with a pretty ribbon and present it for birthday or a hostess gift. Here are those lusterware salt and pepper shakers and the lady prints in the background are quite nice. Could even put those in a bathroom, in a guest room. And I see some beautiful hand painted pieces here. And this soup tureen is not only beautiful, but it's interesting because it's got the back stamp on the lid and it's Royal Worcester, the cameo pattern. And this looks to be hand painted. There were lots of ladies in the early 1900s who painted China as a hobby. The green lamps look like they would go in just about any room. And I see a bit of a barley twist here on this server. And keep in mind that's not only for a dining room, you could put that in just about any room of the house. And you know, I love boxes. That heart shape is nice and the price is right. These I think are interesting. You could certainly embellish them, put something in the top, even a plant. Wish I had room for those. And this mantle is decorated beautifully with fall colors, chinoiserie and cobalt hurricanes. I love how that's added to the fall colors and you can't go wrong with that. It's really good for year round. And this booth offers an interior design service. Would be nice to ask them for help decorating your home. They have so many good ideas here. And the bowl would be nice for so many rooms of the house. Bowls are so purposeful. And I always say look up at an antique shop. You never know what you'll find. Those are some nice trunks. We've seen the Florentine tables and here is a jewelry box. That's definitely a rare item. You don't see that too often. And the children's tea set I think is perfect because they can't break it. And they certainly can learn to enjoy tea using this set. If I had a younger child, I would definitely take that home. And these Tiffin glasses with the gold rim are beautiful. And you have to get up close to really see that they are etched have a beautiful design and they price them as groupings. So if you only wanted one size, you could get that. Royal Dalton Bunnykins is a pattern that I started out with as a baby. And there's so many design elements. And this is one of those mystery items that I will feature in a future episode. That reminds me of a Downton Abbey episode. I think they kept food warm with this. It's not something you see very often. How about that? The transfer wear, again, a mystery item. We'll talk about that in the future. And you know, I love the Royal Collection, Queen Elizabeth's parents, and that's her uncle, Edward, who actually never was coronated, even though he was technically the king. Glass cloches, add anything of interest, and you can tell your story. It's a beautiful silver Sheffield tray. And look at these glasses. Oh, I can see desserts in those. They're not just for beverages. This is a nice petite decanter. And it's got the Hobstar design, which is European, very possibly Eastern European. I love the colors in this transfer wear. Rural scenes, rural Staffordshire, pottery. Be great for desserts. And the baskets here are way up high and I think those could be really nice for the farmhouse look. And the quail plates are great for fall or winter. Californian quail. So many neat pieces in this booth. And the table setting out that was very rustic and inviting. And there's a story to this table and the booth owner will share it with us in just a minute. Stay tuned. Beautiful plates. 
I really enjoyed the table setting that was here in this booth. And then I passed <laughs> by and met Susan, and she <laughs> wanted to tell me all about it, so she took the place setting off. So Susan, tell me about this table. Well, it's new to the shop. It's probably New England, about 1800s. And it's called a hutch table because obviously it's down and with the table settings, it looked like a dinner table, just yes. like it would. But in the 1800s, the log cabins and such, space was tight. You didn't have a whole lot of space and this would take a considerable amount of floor space. So the cool thing about these types of tables are, obviously you use it for that and then you mm. can tilt it and push it against the wall <sighs> and it's a chair. Now sometimes they have storage underneath, this one doesn't. But, so it's kind of the way, the ingenuity of, you know, building something, obviously it's handmade, that you can use and kind of put aside and make room for something else that you need the space for, so. And who would have known as we passed by? We were admiring your place setting. Right, right, that's why I took it off. I thought, you need to look, because most people, you know, they're not, they're not common to find down here. And so that's why I thought, I want to show this to you, because this is another interesting piece I think people would enjoy seeing. Oh, I love it. Thank you for sharing. Sure, you're welcome. And so many other treasures in your booth, but there's one thing over here, I think it's called a penetier. Yes, is that correct? it is. Maybe you could show that to us as well. Sure. That's a French piece, and it kind of looks like a cage, but the French would have typically hung that on a kitchen wall or, you know, somewhere where they had the space for it and they would have stored their cheeses and their breads, kind of like their, I guess a modern day, you know, uh, bread box that we might use. And below it, that usually had an accompanying piece that you would put the dough in while you're working it and letting it rise. So it was kind of a dual two pieces. This is only half of that I have, okay. but it's beautifully carved and it's, you know, it's really a lovely piece, very unusual. You don't see those a ton anymore, but we don't use bread and cheese as much as they did. So I, I try to show some pottery in it for a different Lovely. perspective. And look at that carved work. Oh, I love it. Thank you for sharing. You're Susan. welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad we caught each other. What a treat that was to run into Susan. I see some beautiful clocks. This is the carriage clock from Waterford Crystal. It resembles a mantle clock and the price is right. This is Marquis by Waterford. I remember when this launched in the 90s. There's the Acid Etch stamp. Make sure you look for that when you're trying to identify a crystal brand. That's a beautiful piece of malachite. Lots of furnishings here. It's definitely worth a look. This is hand painted, quite special. And I love how they accessorize. They give you ideas. You know you're in Texas when you see the boots. I wish I had more room in my home. I'm seeing so many pieces that I can find um, uses for, and it's definitely an interesting look. Great storage, wouldn't this be nice for a kitchen or a breakfast room? And a bookshelf with glass doors, that is so special. You know, I love the barley twist, and this one has an oval pie crust top. It's a great curio cabinet. So many possibilities here. You know, when you're looking to outfit a home, I really strongly recommend that you go to your local antique shop because the quality of those days, you just don't get anymore. And you'll find a look that adds a lot of credibility to your home and decor. And you can certainly mix styles as well. This plate I thought was interesting. It reminded me of a Gien pottery. And love plates, they're great for serving cookies or breakfast for one. You can add a white mug with that even give it as a gift. The classic blue willow. This looks like a utensil holder, I like that. This is the most unique ginger jar. I've never seen a shape like this. And this is another item I'll feature in the odd finds. Not odd to me, but some people might not know what that is when you go antique shopping. I can't get enough of these covered boxes. That would be a great men's gift as well. This Jasper cheese dome looks to be maybe from the 1800s. It's not something you see very often in perfect shape. There's the Corona Bowl from Orifers Crystal. I used to sell lots of these in my corporate gift business because it's great for engraving. There's a nice size panel to etch on. There's the classic Wedgwood Blue and the green, my favorite colors. That's a sweet lamp that would be nice for a little girl's room and the price is right and the shade is perfect. This sugar bowl can certainly stand alone. You could use it for 
just about anything you can think of, including small soaps in the bathroom. It's a beautiful shaped shade with that chinoiserie lamp and some religious items. It reminds me of Europe. Wish I had room in my bedroom for this whatnot shelf and that classic lacquerware. They do such a good job of adding pieces and showing you how you can use this in your home and those Linux canisters are special. This is a Japanese tea set. Looks like a sugar bowl, but it's actually a teacup with a lid. That is really a nice piece. There's just so much to see. You could go back two or three times and discover new items. And they do add products all the time. So if you go every few weeks or so, you're going to see a different array of products. This etched basket, I think, is a deal at under $20. There's another one of those jardiniers or planters that I want to add to my collection. I think this was originally made for tulips. And that's a Marajera piece, museum in New York, Metropolitan Museum has their logo on that. It's probably specially made for them. This creamer is beautiful. And even though I don't really like orange, I think when you add it to the blue, it's extra special. Majolica wear. And you, remember, you don't have to have a whole set. You could just showcase one piece. And this is interesting. It's a very tiny chest of drawers with a name. I wonder if that would have been on a ship, perhaps. This is my favorite furniture piece that I've seen with, of course, one of my favorite products featured on it. This is a writing desk. There's a lot of detail with the inlay. Another example of a piece that could go in any room of your house. And this you could add just about anything of interest. A great shelf for displaying. Here's some of the mid-century. I love the green glasses. There's so many interesting elements in this particular booth. I love the chinoiserie look with the bamboo. It's been painted blue, which I love. This could be from the 70s, I'm not sure. It says faux bamboo lacquered et hagir, 10175, and it's got beveled glass. Such a great piece. And right here, I wanted to bring to your attention, this is a framed textile. And that gives me an idea. You can actually just find a fabric that you love and frame it. It could be the backdrop for an office setting. It could be above a bed in a bedroom. You could do an interesting shape frame. I think that is so clever. And of course, it's got my favorite motif here with the chinoiserie. And that element is evident in these beautiful blue lamps as well with the bamboo touches. And those planters are quite nice too. It's an eclectic mix here at Heights Antiques. The 60s lamp. And this is a perfect example of the chinoiserie. It's lacquerware and its original purpose was a sewing box. And of course you could use it for just about anything today. Be used for jewelry as well. And this planter would fit just about any season. I love the multicolor look. It's the Chinese rose pattern from Copeland Spode. You could roll up hand towels, place that in a guest bath. Now let's go upstairs for more. There's some lovely artwork and so many different decades and eras are shown here and this gives you a good overview of the shop and that's why i say look up because see what you might be missing the three panels would make a nice statement above a sofa or even a bedroom the george and martha washington plates would be great for my daughters the american revolution fundraiser and the silent auction might have to think about these and the transfer wear from Mason's is great. And you'll notice inside it has some discoloration. You could soak that in peroxide for about four or five days and it actually comes clean. This plate from Bavaria is beautiful with the roses. It's a great price point. Put that on an easel and you've got some decor. And the brown transfer wear is very earthy. I think that would go with lots of seasons. 
love that chandelier. And here's a vintage typewriter, Smith and Corona. That would be a good focal point for a room. And these we couldn't quite figure out. I think it's a feeder, perhaps for toddlers. I've not seen these before. This is a first for me. It looks like a set of Mad Men. I think Hollywood needs to come calling. And if you grew up in the 60s or 70s, you probably remember this. Stereo is a, basically a fixture in every home in America. And if you ask younger generations, they probably would not know how to dial. See the numbers on that? It has some letters and numbers. That's how the phone numbers used to be. And that PR might have stood for Prince. Maybe you can enlighten me. Again, that beautiful chandelier and the leaf art is so fun. This arrangement looks so fresh and real. I think that's a steal at $50 complete with the fiddleheads. And for a farmhouse look, so many great ideas here with the French tea towel, original table and the ironstone. And there's a salt box. I like the green transfer wear. It's definitely French looking with the bowls that are footed. And they are, looks like new from France. Great collections here. And the pottery reminds me of something that we used to get in Zuffenheim in France. Ours is blue, no surprise to you. And it is handmade in France. Lots of potteries there. This door is fabulous. Wouldn't that look great in a farmhouse? And all of these stained glass panels, you could really use in so many different ways. It doesn't have to be integrated into your window frame. You can simply put it on top and hang it to add interest. And I see some Art Deco canisters. These are made in Germany by the Bauer Company. And here's a blue willow cup that is made in occupied Japan. We've found some more pieces with a gold rim. Vintage linens are always worth a look. Here are some embroidered flatware keepers. That's something I don't come across too often. Great for storage. And the napkins are such fine quality. These are hand crocheted. You just don't have that today. And what a nice set that would be. Great gift. You don't have to have your own monogram to make it interesting. There's a ready-made accent piece or centerpiece of seashells in that coop dish. This is lovely, an English platter. It's quite old. And these French perfume bottles are exquisite. Not something that I've ever seen before. And you know, you can't have too many cake stands. These EAPG are so useful. You could stack them. You could place perfume bottles on them. And some mid-century glasses with the leaves would be great for your fall table. You certainly want to hand wash those. And silver overlay salt cellars. That's something I don't know that I've seen before. So very special. A Dartington crystal piece. It looks a lot like the Matsuyama Sun. Great for the horse lover. I see some hand painted Bavarian dishes. That's a whole tea set. And it looks like some dinner plates too. I love those colors. The Wedgwood Wad Strawberry is one of my patterns that I just love. The ginger jar I've not seen before. It's definitely coming home with me. And at 35% off for this booth, that's about $20. And that small dish is $9. And then the teacup and saucer was $7.80. In the Lee design, Wedgwood made two cups. The Peony is mostly what I have, but that'll be a nice addition. And the salt cellars are interesting. I've not seen that shape before. Very modern. The oval is one of my favorite sizes and designs for a salt cellar. You could use it for dipping sauces as well. Lots of different uses for salt cellars. And the ceramic ladles are definitely hard to find. If you had a white or even maybe blue and white dishes, that'd be nice to add. And a square compote is definitely something you don't see often. I love the shape. This is perhaps the most beautiful teapot that I've seen today. Love the look of it, and it's very old. We sure had fun today at Heights Antiques on Yale, and we did find some treasures and lots of other things that we're thinking about. 
This sugar bowl I think is such fun and it has a great back stamp. Eggshell Georgian from Homer Laughlin, love that. You could use that for cinnamon and sugar. And this lovely lady, Occupy Japan, I could not resist. Have to take her home, I could place her just about anywhere. This plate I thought was Jeanne pottery. It's a division of Baccarat, it's actually not. It says Bluebird made in Italy and it is gorgeous. I could do so much with that. Just put some cookies on it. And my wild strawberry pattern, I'm so happy to have found some pieces affordably. The small ginger jar, little tray, and the teacup and saucer. And my friend is getting the Sadler and Company mugs. Aren't they gorgeous? They're so beautiful. That's the company in England that makes all the teapots. And another friend who's not with me today has this pattern from Ralph Lauren. And I sent him a picture and he said, yes, please. It's $40 and he is over the moon happy to have this. I'm so glad you joined us today for Heights Antiques. And I hope that you elevate your everyday with antique shopping.